Welcome to another episode of the Men of the House podcast. This is Richard, your favorite Irish Mexican, coming at you from the great state of Texas. <clears throat> so, today is November 16th, and I am back here with the consistency, which is what something I wanted to work on. Um, so, while I work on that, um, my ask of you is to go over to the page on Spotify Follow Instagram, TikTok, the Men of the House podcast. Um, even if you never listen to it again, watch another post, anything, just hit the follow button. It helps out with um, getting it out there. <clears throat> so, anywho, this was originally going to be yesterday, but um, my life is usually pretty interesting in terms of always something going on. So, I think I mentioned last week that my mom was out of town in Virginia working and um, she came back and my daughters had this cough and went to the doctor for it and whatnot. Now my mom seems to have that same cough so she's actually been cooped up in the house for a couple of days now Um, which is kind of impacting whether or not I was going to record an episode um, because I still haven't got the space set up hopefully over Thanksgiving break which kind of starts tomorrow um, for any of you who have kids in school but um, hopefully over the holiday break I can get that podcast area set up and that way I kind of have a dedicated space um, to be consistent however you know just like working out or anything else, um, the situation doesn't always have to be perfect. Sometimes you got to do it where you got to do it, get it in where you can get it in. Um, so I'm actually recording at my dad's place today. Um, he and my wife went to go see my daughter in a play, which I'm going to go see at six this evening. So I'm taking the opportunity to go ahead and record an episode while they're at the play. <clears throat> so. Getting it in, remaining consistent. You guys do the same. Also, another topic this morning is... um, Went to the park for a workout for a walk. Got a text this morning um, that Victoria, a nurse who used to work for me for six years, that I mentioned in the Dia de los Muertos episode, um, she passed away yesterday, unfortunately, sadly, and... She's going to be missed by a lot of people. She was a good person. Um, Never complained, hardworking. But, you know, it's just kind of crazy. I got laid off in December of 2020. And by February of 2021, um, she had started having some issues and um, was eventually diagnosed with lung cancer. Although she never smoked. So... <clears throat> that happens though. Um, and she's fought that for about the past two and a half, three years, and finally succumbed to it um, yesterday about 2 p.m. But, you know, kind of one of the things um, I was fortunate enough to uh, text back and forth with her on November 1st, the day I, before I recorded the episode. <clears throat> On November 2nd, so um, that was nice. But yeah, kind of devastating news. That is the um, second nurse who worked for me who has passed away in the past three years. So my heart goes out to all their family and friends, the people they leave behind. Um, But, you know, We can keep them in our hearts, our minds, our memories forever. And um, also putting it out on here, putting it out into the world. Um, She'll be remembered forever. So, hey, if nothing else, um, I'm doing my part to push forward somebody's memory. Um, So, on to... Let's see, other topics. 
Let me see if I can actually switch and see my notes while I record, since I don't have my laptop or my computer here. Um, see what I got here. What I write while I'm driving around when I have a moment. Things that I just notice. Things that are uh, irritating, maybe annoying, entertaining, if nothing else. So, uh, we'll just lighten up the mood. Um, just shoot the shit a little bit. Let's see here. <clears throat> so I typed here, spin local. And so I think... What I was looking at on that is, you know, my wife and I, there's a particular taco truck we really dig, or this Mexican restaurant has some pretty good birria tacos, and uh, yeah, spend your money local. Spend your money with people who are out there hustling. McDonald's, Taco Bell, big corporations, they don't need any more of your money. Um, take people who are out there who are getting up every day, trying to make it happen, you know, their families, family people, um, maybe it's your favorite taco truck, hamburger truck, whatever it is, <clears throat> um, or store, local business, you know, go out and support them, um, way better, in my opinion, you know, it's pretty much kind of like podcasting, you know, you got somebody out there trying to do something trying to make it happen and you can go out there and give them your support and um and you feel good about it at least i do so keep that in mind when you're out there because you vote with your dollar let's see here was another one oh back to the tiktok time suck which i really try to never go down more than once a week but, um, yeah, I rolled across a TikTok where it was like surgeons in an OR suite doing plastic surgery. And you can ask them questions. And while I get it, I mean, <clears throat> you know, I worked in hospitals, teaching hospitals. Um, and so while it's probably not abnormal for a surgeon to be answering questions and whatnot, um while they're teaching to me it is kind of weird to have a tiktok open live streaming a surgery a surgery and you can ask the surgeons questions it's you know my thought on it is hey uh some woman's gonna walk out of there with a crooked nose and her knockers all out of whack so yeah <clears throat> pretty interesting also, um, on the TikTok rabbit hole, you know, I don't do anything live. I don't know that I would if I could. <clears throat> but you got to have a thousand followers to actually even go live on TikTok. And so, you know, as I scroll through these live feeds, you know, on some of them, I'm like, how on earth? You know, let's say I got a hundred followers. <clears throat> How on earth do some of these people get so many followers? You know, is it a... Maybe they just had an interesting post. Um, or, you know, I'd mentioned the one, hey, you got guys in a Syrian refugee camp who have at least a thousand followers. Pretty wild. This morning I uh, scrolled past a little person. A bow-legged little person doing karaoke. Put a little bit of the Asian persuasion. Pretty interesting, to say the least. So I'm guessing, uh, you know, people are just as enamored as I am. I mean, something's eye-catching. It's kind of like watching a train wreck. You know, there are some lives that are pretty bland and boring where people might just be staring out at a lake which could be peaceful but some people train the cameras on their legs or 
an empty room and they're like, oh, once I get so many likes, I'll show my face or some something like that. But um, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's a whole deep dive on how the mind works, how manipulation works, how what people are willing to do to uh, um, get someone else's attention. Um, but kind of the thing with TikTok that everybody talks about is, um, you know, algorithms, addictions in terms of uh, it's hard to stop scrolling or swiping and <clears throat> you can get stuck on something that's absolutely absurd. And maybe you're just watching it because it's available. Um, I guess, you know, I don't think I'm starving to put anything into my mind, but, you know, I guess if you were hungry and starving, you would eat anything in front of you. So kind of along the same way, the same token, I you know, but I'm not that starving for attention. It was, or looking to occupy my mind, I should say. Um, <clears throat> usually some of these are, let's say, like this morning, I got up at four in the morning and um, today is not a gym day to me. It was a go to the park walk outside, be outside kind of a day. So, you know, while everyone else is asleep, maybe I'll scroll through TikTok, look at a live, see what's going on. Um, and that's kind of how I'll get caught up. But, you know, I've been getting up four to five-ish in the morning. Um, and then normally we'll get my daughter ready to go to school and leave the house by seven. But, you know, you got a little bit of time in between there to kill if you're up early. So, yeah, I'll see what's going on and sometimes go down the rabbit hole a little bit. But, um, yeah, this has been... It seems like everybody was up early this morning and part of it is because one of our dogs, Peanut, um, he's probably 17, 18 years old that we know of, a rat terrier. He has kind of been barking through the night, kind of like a barking, whining, yelping. He's very, very old. Um, my wife and I have had him since 2006, and he was a friend of ours' dog, and that friend moved. And when he moved, he couldn't take Peanut with him, so we decided we would keep him. And we've had him ever since. And um, But yeah, it's just interesting to, you know, he's getting older, as are we. But, you know, I look at kind of how he was as a young dog when we first got him and you know, he used to go everywhere with me. You know, mind you, this is 2006. I probably didn't get a smartphone till 2015, I'm guessing. So this was like kind of pre-smartphone days for me. No Tom, Tom, no whatever. So, you know, my wife and I, <clears throat> at that time, we had moved to Austin. And uh, I would basically just put Peanut in the car put the sunroof open, turn on some tunes, and drive around, try to get lost, see where I came out. And that's kind of how I got to know Austin. Um, and me and Peanut spent a lot of time together. And it was crazy because he loved the car. And um, before that, though, when we had adopted him, he was actually scared of the car. And I uh, used to shake on car rides. Um, but then he got, got to where he loved it, loved sticking his face out the back window hanging out so um <clears throat> yeah and now he is a 17 18 year old dog who cries in the middle of the night yelps has trouble standing up especially on the tile floor in the kitchen 
Um, we pretty much have to pick him up to take him outside. And sometimes he pees while he's laying down or poops while he's laying down um, because he can't hold himself up. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things of, um, you know, going back to the last topic of seeing how, you know, we all age. Um, You know, I, I don't recover from staying up 24 hours the way I used to um, when I work nights all the time or when I was younger. Um, You don't heal as fast. Things hurt a little more. But you see that transition and it's a little sad, but it, you know, it's a reminder of life. Um, Where you were, where you are, how far you've come, but that we all age. Time plays no favorites. We're all subject to the same end, regardless of how much money you have, how good your life is, how bad your life is. Um, We're all subject to the same end on equal playing ground when it comes to that. So, you know, it's... It's one of those things that, you know, kind of cliche or like a saying, but it's true how fast things change, you know, Um, like two episodes ago talking about how many family members we've lost over the past three years. Um, And then you have a couple of nurses They used to work for me. Um, These are nurses that my wife, my daughter, would see when they went to the doctor. Um, You know, it goes by quickly. Um, And you never know. You know, this person was 52, very young. I'm 47. So... You know, that will, that'll tickle your brain a little bit and make you think. But it's one of those things of, hey, you got to get out there, do what you want to do, steer your own ship. Um, Because in the end, not a lot of it's going to matter. You know, maybe whether you were a good person, do you feel good about the things You did the things you said. Did you help other people? Did you give things your all? Were there things that you wanted to try that you didn't? Those might be regrets. You know, I'll say probably the only thing you're going to regret are the things you didn't do, the chances you didn't take, the conversations you didn't have, the people you wanted to tell I love you, but you didn't. Um, So, yeah, you, you, you know. Take it in, remind yourself of it, be cognizant of it, but also use it to motivate you to take that chance to get out there and do the things you want to do. I mean, that's why I'm doing this. Um, Some of you know me, some of you don't. But, you know, I did healthcare for 12 years. Um, that was a part of my life. But, hey, it's over. It's done with. I want to do something new. <clears throat> but I also want my life to be built around things that are important to me. And the things that are important to me are spending time with my family. Um, which is mostly it. And then having the freedom to do that. So, you know, doing a little podcast, doing some Uber, and anything else I need to do. But, um, you know, that's why I can go to the show today. That's why I can hang out and spend time with my dad. Um, That's why, you know, that's how I arrange my life. 
because that's what's important to me. And um, I think to me that's more important than kind of the perceived corporate stability and paycheck. Don't get me wrong. A steady paycheck is nice. Um, But, you know, the things that come with that paycheck in terms of being on call 24-7, <clears throat> 2 a.m. phone calls, transporting vaccines on Super Bowl Sunday, um, doing payroll when you're on vacation at Disney because you don't trust. You know, I'm not going to give my payroll to another manager to do. There's no way to piss off your employees quicker than screwing up their pay. And then, of course, you know, in a big corporation, it's going to take a whole pay period probably to correct that. So, you know, you don't want to mess up people's money. So you bite the bullet and you're on vacation and you should be having fun, enjoying yourself, but you're sitting with a laptop somewhere doing work, answering emails, this or that, the other. And, um, you know, after getting laid off, um, you realize just how, you know, Big corporations don't really care. Um, all they want is all they want are the results that they want. They're not necessarily interested in how you get them, unless it's illegal, of course, or um, what it takes to get to that level or make a certain thing happen. They just want it to happen. So, and. At the end of the day, you're a number, you know, they'll get rid of you. They'll have your job posted before your obituary's up. Um, You know, and that was kind of the same thing. I mean, you know, with all due respect, there wasn't much that Victoria could do, I guess, once she was diagnosed. But, you know, they're quick to figure out a way to replace the body so productivity doesn't slow any and then I'm sure they're quick to figure out a way to not have to pay for you know that forever basically on how are they going to get somebody out are they going to buy them out with a severance package like they did me um Are you going to use up all your FMLA or whatever until HR and the law can't protect you anymore and eventually they have to part ways with you? I don't know. But that's kind of how corporations are. So just beware if you're going to work for one, if you're going to work in that environment. Um, You know, some people operate fine in those environments. And... Some people get a lot of fulfillment, but um, I didn't. <clears throat> you know, those environments, for me, I just felt like I could never be me. Um, my mouth is too, uh, I don't have a filter. And um, I'm kind of a person like what's right is right regardless. Um, or if it makes sense, then it makes sense. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, and in <clears throat> corporate scenarios, corporate worlds, it's, you know, generally sometimes ideas are welcome, but generally it's hey, sit there, be quiet and do what we ask you to do. And they don't want to hear anything from you. Um, like I said, I've been written up for off the cuff comments. So yeah, my mouth has pretty much got me in trouble all the way from being in the Corps of Cadets at Texas A&M, being in the military. Most places I've been employed. Even though, you know, I, I think if you know me, I'm generally a pretty nice person, pretty compassionate, would do anything for most people. Give you the shirt off my back if that was all I had. Um... But I'm also the kind of person, like, if you cross me or you wrong me 
or uh, like I said, what's right is right or what makes sense makes sense, then um, yeah, I'll probably speak up and you probably won't be happy with what I have to say. It'll cause an argument, a disagreement, but you know, at the end of the day, <clears throat> that's me. It's all I can be. Um, you know, this podcast, being open, speaking truth, being vulnerable, all this really is about me trying to be the truest version of myself because I am tired of trying to be the version that everybody else wants me to be. So, you know, as a kid, pretty smart, graduated high school year early, got in the Corps of Cadets at 17, um, scholarships, all kinds of stuff. But, um, you know, I think just because one could doesn't mean one should. Um, and, you know, when I was young, I got praise for doing well in school, graduating early and all that. So kind of a people-pleasing type of thing is what I fell into. And then you realize that you start pleasing everyone but yourself. And then, you know, in healthcare too, I am a giving, caring, compassionate person. So you give, give, give to others, but then you never give to yourself. So the past few years being laid off, trying to figure everything out, figure out what direction I want to go. Um, it's only been recently that I've decided I want to be the truest version of myself. And sometimes I got to fill my own cup and I have to fill that cup. Even if other people don't agree with the way I fill it or they don't know what it is, or they're unsure, um, or maybe they think I'm different, or I'm standoffish, or I say no. Um, but that's just me putting up boundaries that have been missing for a long time. That's just me having some self-respect, respe respecting myself, having some self-love, giving myself self some self-care, and doing the things that make me happy and that work for me. And I know what those things are, the things that I need to do, which are get some movement, some exercise, boost my brain activity, um, stick to a routine a little bit, work on the podcast, make some money, spend time with my family, have that freedom, be able to be myself, wear what I want to wear, not dress up in a monkey suit, have long hair and a man bun if I want it, and not have to worry about corporate rules, and show my tattoos, and do what I want to do, and say what I want to say. And that's what I'm choosing to do. And yeah, this is a little bit of a all over the place kind of podcast, but um, hey, you know, when you get news first thing in the morning that, you know, someone you spent six years with um, passed away and all these things come up and, you know, this is what I've been thinking about all morning and kind of wanting to put out there. So, um. Hopefully it resonates with somebody. Um, hopefully you get to understand me a little bit better. Um, if you're a family member listening to this. Um, that's kind of what this is about. But also if you're out there, you feel the same way, you have the same feelings, even if sometimes you're not alone. You guys, peace out. Have a great day. And I will see you next time. Peace.